Hey, listen, if you want to know what's going on out there at Starbase, this video can probably help. A little. It's time for another Starbase summary. What the? What is that? It's like a, it's like a sand crawler. Not really. It's a power bunker, it says. That's just like, would you like a fully assembled building to be delivered to the launch site? <laughs> sure, why not? We have plenty of tires. Just put them under the thing and roll it down the road. <laughs> Sorry. It is time for another Starbase summary as mentioned. Checking, on, checking out what's going on out there at Starbase. There's some um, shots of the Rocket Garden with the beautiful battle damage up at the top of the two flown and caught to boosters. Look at a little bit of an angle shot here. You can see that pad B O L M or a launch mount, we should say. There, got a bunch of uh, draperies around. I don't think they're decorating. I think they're trying to control the wind or FOD or something like that. Maybe as they finish off Parts of that manifold, we saw him put that huge piping in that's going to put the water through the top of that mount. There's the high bay. You can see there in the text, it says dismantling is current underway. They've actually got a little safety area roped off. We saw that previously. Uh, those guys look like they're well equipped to take that building down. They've got safety stuff and hard hats, and they look very energetic. You can see they've been taking out uh, a lot of the windows and also removing the roof panels. If you've been checking out Starbase Live at night, there have been like nightly showers of sparks as they cut parts off. Like there's some daytime sparks there, but just all hours of the night cutting torches going off as they cut all of that uh, original structure of the high bay out so they could get rid of it because they're going to build an even bigger building, the Giga Bay. It's sort of how it goes. It's apparently high and then Mega Bay, and then Giga Bay. So we've got two Mega Bays out there, and they're going to put in a Giga Bay. Also putting a Giga Bay out at the Cape on the Florida side over at Cape Canaveral if you've seen any of our Cape updates that we do. We'll probably get about once of those in per month. Not as frequent as Starbase, but in any event. The framing of the Starbase sign right there over the tower, nice. Continuing work, all that scaffolding going up around the framework for the gantry on the second mount. Remember, the whole thinking here is they're assembling that mount back at the assembly yard where we see them working at that back near the production site. And this is over at the launch site, so they're doing work here, preparing the ground. We saw them pump the concrete. We saw them build this big structure that they're going to be mounting equipment and piping and GSE and all that sort of stuff to. Apparently, that's where they backed that power bunker in. It's literally just like an entire assembled building. I, I guess they assembled this in a factory somewhere and then just rolled it down the road instead of having to build it and wire it all together out here in the field. I imagine there's some sort of efficiency to that. Oh, that's a flame trench wall part. Like two, uh, two walls sort of held across or held apart by pillars, I guess you could say. Got some shots of some new homes under construction. You can see the concrete pilings because this is in a uh, hurricane sort of flood area. You raise the main levels of those houses up off the ground and you put your second story, you know, a story above the ground. See all the pilings and stuff. And you'll, you'll finish those bottom parts. Usually you'll have a garage down there. You can have rooms down there as well. But the main part of your house is usually up there 10, 12 feet off the ground in case you get a flood surge coming in from a hurricane. Also, look at those big, beefy metal beams in there as well. That's something you of often see in residential construction, right? Continue over to Massey's real quick. Big thanks to Caesar. Uh, Jack has been on the road working on another project, and Caesar has been out there holding it down with the photon capture. So uh, put some love down in the comments for Mr. Caesar G, who has been out there with us. Catching up with what is going on. Thanks, Caesar. Gonna get a little bit of a roll back. Booster 16 coming back from the Massey's test site. That first one was a long range shot, so it was a little grainy. Here we're at River, going by our River property there. And you can see it going over towards the production site. Color balance, how does it work? You know, we have enough 24-7 cameras out in the field uh, that we have organically installed. We, you know, they get pretty close. Uh, colors, yeah, I mean, they're, they're close enough. If you put them together in a four box and you're like, ooh, point them at the sky and like, how many different colors of blue are there? I can answer that question by telling you how many cameras we have in the field. 
in any event, all the way back into the production site. Left a little hole in the fence there for it to go through. Now they're putting the fence back up again. Look, they let it roll through, and then they put the safety fence for the demolition, the demolition back. Doing some, like, rips on the crane there. Was a crane going up and down a few times? Not sure. I'm going to hop back over to the gantry again, see some smaller excavators doing some digging. Truck went by all of a sudden. Jeez, that'll get your attention. Just a lot of preparation work here on the structure. Really waiting to see them start to install piping and tubing and hoses and whatever else all they're going to put into that structure. There we've got the base of Tower 2. It said concrete washout station there. I assume that's part of the... Uh, the trucks, they brought in however many hundreds of concrete trucks. I don't know that anybody actually counted exactly how many trucks that came in. I need to check and see if we... We have cameras everywhere, right? And I, I think that we set one to just record the road, and we could theoretically go in there and over X number of day periods just see how many concrete trucks went in one direction or the other, right? Anyways... Like, is that really important? Like, could SpaceX come out and say over 300 concrete trucks were used for the whatever, right? Um, I don't know. Yeah, I guess uh, we could get to that data if it was really interesting. Or if somebody wants to count country, concrete trucks, let me know. Maybe we should just post up that raw footage and let y'all count the trucks. Hey, look, banana for scale shirt. Nice. More of these... Uh, actuators here. More and more structure being built here. At first it looked like those were going to be the highest things and they kept adding and adding more stuff. There's that 24 inch 600 millimeter pipe is what it says on the label there. And there's a vacuum truck. <laughs> That's a uh, big truck with a vacuum canister. I guess canister is a good way to say it. Vacuum back on it. I wonder what they were going to vacuum. And is it the toilets? Usually smaller trucks work for that. We've been seeing them work on this quite a bit, the concrete walls. They have those temporary movable walls. You see them in the bottom there? Yeah, there. All of those are movable walls. Not the thing that the forklift's carrying, but the black shorter things. And then they've been building these big forms to pour an actual concrete wall that does not need to move. You see them do it all the time. They, they move the temporary walls in and out and in and out every time there's a launch. It's just a, honestly a waste of time. Um, they could secure the area without having to move those things back and forth, but the way the temporary bar the movable barricades are made, they would get blown over by the launch. Like, highly probable that uh, some of those could get tossed around a little bit by the forces of the launch, I would think. Because you see them moving them every time. I mean, just trucks worth of them. Picking them up with forklifts, putting them on flatbeds, and pulling them uh, away from the launch site. Roundabout construction. Man, this is the straightest roundabout I've ever seen. Like, it, it doesn't even really look like enough room for a roundabout, but maybe, t maybe we need a higher angle. Is that the door? There used to be an old rusty door that was out there. I don't know that they ever picked it up. It got blown off in Flight 1, I think it was. Hey, look at that! <laughs> if you need to know where to watch... I need to get that logo redone. See the, the bed there? I do have a design. One of the commu com whoa, community members sent me a design for something that looks a little cooler. Then the aerial font slapped on the bed rail of the truck. Yikes. <laughs> I mean, the front logo looks cool. You might as well make the bed logo look cool. Well, that's what we tool around Starbase. If you ever see us working out there, like, feel free to come up to the truck and be like, hey, I, see, I saw you online. I listen to you talk all the time. You look like that? Really? I thought you looked a lot different. Yeah, this is the launch site from the south. This one's got Gage's name on it. Big thanks to Gage as well. Uh, Gage has been spending some time out there at Starbase, helping with a cleanup of some of the sites, has moved a couple cameras around, installed a couple new PTZ cameras. Just uh, good handiwork out there that Gage has been helping with. It really is how it works. Like, like the community member will be like, hey, I know how to do this stuff. Do you all need some help with this? And sometimes we're like, sure. Come on. Like, give us some help. Um, we do have some opportunities like that. In fact, if you're in the Discord, there's actually a work for NSF. Or I, say, I think it says work with NSF, right? That, anyways, we, we have all sorts of different opportunities out there. Some are, some are paid opportunities. Some are volunteer opportunities. Some are just like viewing opportunities as members of the community to get together. Anyway, you slice it. 
Man, you can see the RF interference on this camera. I gotta, I gotta get up here and do something about this camera. We think this is on top of the Margaritaville Hotel, right? And we think that it's just uh, so close to some of the uh, LTE antennas there that it causes RF interference in the lines to be like picked up in the cables and stuff. Anyways, I need to, I need to solve that in my copious free time. Chopsticks all the way up the tower. Looks like what? Is, there are two of them. This is a second power bunker arrives. Okay, that I'd really I'm really curious what's in those things. Like, are they uh, switches? Are they batteries? Is it just uh, like power handling equipment? I probably know a couple people I could ask what might be in a huge bunker like that. But anyways, there's that big other crane that has been being assembled. If you saw it for a little bit there, it looked like a walker. It's one of those things where it takes a crane to assemble the other crane. Oh, nice. Coming up from the uh, side angle there. But looks like they're going to be using this big crane to take... Oh, look, good test, good test. To take off parts of that building as they disassemble it from the top down. That's going to be a problem. That's where we usually put the cameras <laughs> for launch. That's where trailer rolls in next to Hopper there. It did say in the description that this was only a temporary spot. It's just while they're making room. But see, like, all those things, like hookups, access panels... Vent fans. I'm gonna I'm gonna ask around what could be in that big black power box. I think it's actually kind of a dark gray, but you know black box. Great. That's a reference. It's a sketchy the palette. Cribbing, I think that might be cribbing more than a palette. Sort of waggling all over. No, you gotta do is move it. Whatever. That's like matting. I think there's cribbing, like the big things are cribbing, and then that's more of a mat than a crib. I'm sure the crane operators in chat will tell me what the difference between those things are. It really is how it goes. It's like, oh, yeah, they're spraying down that grass with some grass seed, and it's got green in it. And there's, like, 50 people in chat that are like, yeah, it's, it's hydro seeding. That's called hydro seeding or whatever. I'm like, wow, I didn't know so many people knew about hydro seeding. I didn't know that name. Our favorite uh, cryo truck there with a the space shuttle on it. All the pipes there. The complication, you know, somewhere there's a big system that shows where all those pipes go and which valves are on and what the pressures and temperatures and all that sort of stuff are. Almost all the windows gone from the high bay. Ah, and then a look in the window here down at the factory at Ship 38's nose cone. Well, that's it for now, folks. You know what we do every couple days we check in. We see what's happening at Starbase. See testing, see construction, see all sorts of stuff. But either way you slice it, we appreciate y'all hanging out with us, just seeing what there is. I do read the comments, so hopefully we'll see you down there. But for now, we'll see you nerds later.